Hello out there and welcome to my channel. My name is Milesy. Last week I showed you how I record my embroidery. Today I'm going to show you how I turn that into a speed stitch video and we have the infinite void into the abyss because every time I've tried to record this today something went really weirdly wrong so I'm just going to let it do that. Uh, ignore that. But what we do now that we have all of our stuff put together is we need to go into our folder which is right here and we can see that I have all of these MKV files that I have recorded earlier and there's some MP4s uh, that's because I've actually already made this speed stitch video but since I have the files I'm going to go ahead and use these as the example so we have the MKV files which my video editor down here can't actually use and so we have OBS and so we're going to go up here to file and then to Remux recordings and for some reason this part doesn't actually like to record for some reason uh, when I try this so if it does that I will put a screenshot right here of where this is so we're going to click Remix recordings and we have these two fields OBS recording and target file we don't need to deal with target file we just want the OBS recording and we hit browse and we'll go back in here to our Mario folder and we're just going to select one of these MKV files and now we can see down in target file it has changed that file so that it is now an mp4 which is something that most video editors can read it's something that YouTube can read although that's not really important at this point it doesn't change the file name unless the file name is too big then it will shorten it a little bit but it will go into the same place just under a different file format and at this point now we just hit Remux. It's going to ask me if I want to replace the file because I've done this before. Uh, if you haven't already done this, you won't get this dialog. So I'm going to click yes. And then we go through this. There we go. It has Remuxed the recording. So we hit OK and we hit close. And at this point now, we no longer need OBS will hop over into Premiere. So now that we are in Premiere, I will just show you really quickly how this goes. We'll create a uh, example Mario thing is what we'll call it. And this will take a moment to populate. It's kind of a big program. This is Adobe Premiere, by the way. This is what I use. Uh, this is a subscription based app. Uh, it's through Adobe. I think it's like $20 a month. If you don't have $20 a month or you don't feel like spending that, there are free alternatives. There is DaVinci Resolve and Lightworks are both very similar to this. Uh, if you're on Mac, there's also Final Cut Pro, which is really good, although that one's pretty expensive. I don't think it has a subscription service like Adobe does. Uh, but I use Adobe because I like to bounce my files between uh, software and we'll actually be using Audition a little bit later as well. Uh, and you can do that very easily with Adobe. I like that. Uh, I like Adobe for that reason. But now that we have our empty timelines here, we're going to come back into our folder with all of our Mario things and we can see all of our MP4s. And it's organized to where we have the very beginning one here in the very end one there. So you're going to click on the very first one, hold down shift, and then click on the very last one, and that will highlight everything. And then we click on the first one again and drag that into the timeline. And the reason you want to make sure that it's in this order is because if you click the last one first and then the first one, it will actually import your videos in the wrong order. So you want to make sure that you are doing that in the proper order uh, otherwise, you will have to do a lot of manual shuffling around later. But now down here, we have our timeline, and it's a bit of a mess. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on that we don't really need, so I'm going to click into the timeline, make sure that it is outlined in blue, and hit Control A. That will select everything. Right-click on something, doesn't matter what it is down there, and we're going to select Nest. It will ask us what we want to call our nested sequence. Nested sequence one is fine, so okay. And now it's turned all of those video clips into a single clip. So now we can 
select everything just by holding down click and dragging and select all those audio files and hit delete we don't need those anymore and there we go now we have our nested sequence now we can see here that it is about 10 hours long that's 9 hours 49 minutes 58 seconds that's very very long we don't want to upload a 9 hour video right now so I'm going to right click on this and go to speed and duration now the ideal time for a speed stitch depending on the complexity is anywhere from about 3 to 10 minutes long and the reason for that is if it's too small of a design and you drag it out too long it's not going to be fast paced enough to hold someone's attention uh, it's just going to be very boring to watch so people are going to click away from that really quickly so you want those simple ones to be nice and short somewhere around three minutes or so uh, as long as it's fast enough to where you can see what's happening without it being too fast to be a blur and if it's longer than about 10 minutes, even if it is a really big project, people will still kind of click away. So you want to just find a good area for it to be in, and you'll start to learn what a good length for your uh, various projects are. In this case, I'm doing a sprite. It's a very simple sprite, even though it's large. There's not a whole lot of different colors happening. It's a very simple design, so I want this to be about five minutes. And we can do this one of two ways. We can either dial in the duration manually or we can change the speed by percentage. And if I add a bunch of zeros, the highest this will go will be to 10,000%. We can see that the fastest it will go is just under six minutes, which I think is going to be a little too long for this. This is a very simple design. Uh, six minutes will still seem very slow. So I'm going to right click again and click on nest again and now it will say nested sequence 2 and you can see down here where it says nested sequence 1 10,000% and that's the speed at which it's going to play when we hit OK that goes away it's now nested sequence 2 and this is 100% of playback speed so can click on this again right click on it go back to speed duration and it's reset to 100 so I can go in here and delete these and just make it five minutes even but if we look over here we can see that it's 459.29 it's never going to be exactly the duration you put in if you want to dial it in manually and that's because it has to use all of the frames that you give it it just kind of shrinks them down and decides which frames to drop so it will kind of be a little bit off usually not more than a second or two though uh, Premiere's pretty good at knowing which frames to drop and which ones to stick around so at this point we have our file and if we try to play it we can see that it's very stuttery and it doesn't really actually want to play that's not a watchable video and you can see that this line right here is red and how you fix that is you go up to sequence render into out and it will look at the files and it will actually render the files to make them playable because right now it's just giving us kind of previews and in most videos you can watch the preview without having to render it uh, the problem with this is because we've sped up 10 hours of video and crunched it into five minutes it doesn't really know what to do when it's trying to play the preview so it kind of loses its mind uh, and as you can see it wants to take four hours to render this video I do not feel like spending four hours making this video so I'm going to hit cancel but when that goes through this line up here will become green and it will be ready to go so at this point now we just need to add a few things to the beginning and end so I'm gonna hop over here and first I'm going to go to my finished objects and find where I took a picture and sometimes I forget to do this step uh, it's not super important especially if you leave a lot of lead out on the end of your video but I'm just going to drop this guy in here right like that and I'm going to hop over here and use this to zoom in and if we do the speed and duration here we can see that it is about four seconds long I want it to be closer to 15 seconds I think and we'll say 10 10 actually sounds a little bit better 
So now if we click on this over here, we get this kind of toolbar going on and we can take this and drag it all the way to the beginning to drop us off at the very first frame of this clip. And then we can open up the scale tool and hit the stopwatch right there. And that will give us a little tiny keyframe. It's probably difficult to see, but it's right there. And then I'm going to take this and drag it not quite to the end. I want it about there. And then if I drag the scale down to about there, you can see that it's automatically created another one. And I can render this uh, selection really quickly. When we hit play on this, I know it's very jittery because I've got OBS running, but this is how you get that really smooth uh, zoom out on your piece of this. Uh, it's not as smooth right now. I wish it were a little bit better, but that's just because I've got a million things running right now as well. So let's go ahead and stop that. And then we're going to drop down to my assets folder and I'm going to grab my favorite channel outro. I've made a bunch, but this is the one I've kind of landed on as my favorite. And I'm just going to drop that in here as well. And that's just this oh, that's eating some flowers. And then I have this overlay that I put on all of my speed stitches. And we can drop that in on top of it. Take this tool right here and just kind of hover it over the end. Click and drag and it will drag that so that the overlay is the length of the video clip. So now that we've done this bit, we want to add a little bit of music. So I'm going to head over to my music folder. And this will take a couple of seconds to populate, but once it does, you can see that the songs that I have used, I have added comments to. So this is the song that I used for Mario. And I'm going to just hold this and drop it right onto the timeline as well. And we can see that it's not long enough for the actual video. And one thing you can do is to, oops, is to copy it, control C and control V, and just paste it on there a few times. One thing that you can do that is a little bit more time intensive, but it does sound better, is to just find several songs that have the same kind of sound or feel, and you can just put those one after another and then edit the end so that it fades out if they don't quite fit right, because you're never going to find tracks the right length to actually fill out your entire video. But what I do is I make sure that my uh, sequence is selected, and then I go to Edit, in Adobe Audition, Sequence. And then I click OK. It wants me to overwrite this because I've done this a couple of times already. And now it's going to open it down here in Adobe Audition. And this is basically for sound, what Premiere is for video, and what Photoshop is for pictures. So I'm going to click OK. And now we have these bars down here, these or these bars up here that are kind of this gray. That's the video. Audition doesn't know what to do with the video, but it does know that it exists. And then this green is the audio. And we can see when we click on it that this enable remix button pops up. So I'm going to hit that and it's going to analyze the track. And what it's doing is it's looking for the beats in the track. It's looking for the different phrases and the ways that it can cut the track up and stitch it back together. So it's going to take a few seconds to do that. And now that it has, we get a few more extra options and we can just peek back over in Premiere and we can see that our duration so far is 5 minutes 27 seconds. So we can click on this blue text right now and 5 minutes 27 seconds. We don't need to worry about the milliseconds uh, because as we can see right here that it is uh, give or take five seconds is what the accuracy will be. It will almost never be the same length as your video track, but that's fine. We can fix that later. So now we're just going to hit enter. And you can see these little white squiggly bits. That's where Audition has cut the track apart and stitched it back together. So now that we have that all done, we're going to go to multi-track, export to Adobe Premiere Pro, mix down session to stereo file, and click export. And yes, I want to overwrite that. So now that's going to pop back in here in Premiere in just a couple of moments. 
and there we go we can see that it is importing the file and I want this on audio 2 because audio 2 is currently empty I'm going to click OK delete the track from audio 1 but we're going to leave the sound on audio 2 and when we zoom out here we can see that we've gone from 27 seconds to now it's 31 seconds that's a little bit longer so we can go to the rate stretch tool right here and I'm just going to click the end and drag it so that it lines up and you can see those little triangles that happen when it lines up and we have uh, basically shrunk the track but it's by such a small amount that it won't really affect the beats per minute or the pitch or anything like that. Nobody will notice that you've shrunk in the track by a few seconds doing it that way. So now I'm going to go back to the selection tool and just kind of grab everything and drag it away just a little bit. And then I'm going to head back into my assets folder and grab my intro and just drop my intro right in there highlight everything again and then I want to zoom in we're just going to bump this right there so that uh, lines up with that you can see that little triangle right there hopefully you guys can see that and now we have everything put together we'll pull the video back on and I like to save before I switch over to another tab just in case it decides to crash on me and then I'm going to go over to audio and now audio has a lot less going on. We have our audio sliders and our video preview. There are some other uh, windows that we can have, but we don't really need those. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this one. And I know that my intro uh, could be about 10 decibels quieter, so I'm going to set track 1 to negative 10. And then this song was pretty loud, so I'm actually going to set it to negative 15. And that's just going to decrease the volume. Those are pretty good volume levels. So we're just going to go to sequence, render into out one more time just to get anything that's changed. And eventually everything, once it's rendered, will be this shade of green right here instead of red. And once that's all green and it has rendered, uh, I just don't want to spend a few hours sitting here doing this. We'll go to file, export, media. And now where we have this blue link right here that says our output name, we're going to click on that and it will automatically drop us into the file where all of our rendered video goes. So mine goes here and you can see all of my previously rendered videos and I'm just going to name this Mario, did I spell that right? It doesn't matter. Mario example and hit save. Uh, you want to be on format 8624 right here. That's a good one for YouTube. Uh, match source high bit rate. It's a good one to use and Then down here we see our basic video settings We don't really need to change anything because we're going to be matching the source So it will export at 30 frames a second. I know that's really hard to see We don't want to mess with the resolution We want it to be at 1080p which it is and everything else is good We don't need to change anything else but the format and the output name and where it's going and then at that point we'll just hit export and it will start rendering the audio files first and it will do that and then it will start trying to put the video together uh, I'm not actually going to let it do that though because this is not a video that has been rendered so what you will get is kind of garbage if you don't render it first it will come out in basically the lowest resolution possible what rendering does is just makes sure that it will be at the resolution you want it to be so once that's exported, it will just go into your folder and you will be able to make your thumbnail and upload it to YouTube. And you can see this was in more or less real time uh, that I did that. It only takes about 20 minutes to put together a speed stitch because I have that second keyboard and a hotkey to stop and start my recording as I go. When I used to do this, when I first started, I would just let it record for however long I would go. So I would have two, three, four, sometimes way more than that, uh, hours of recording that I had to then watch and go through and cut out every single instance of dead air where I was changing the floss or I was fiddling with my stand or anything like that. And that took twice as long to edit the video as it did to film it sometimes. It was ridiculous, but 
The way that I do it now, it takes about 20 minutes, uh, not including the rendering time. That is still kind of a big pain in the butt, but it works, and it works really well. So that is how these speed stitches wind up happening from filming to putting them together and everything in between. Uh, so hopefully you guys found this helpful. If there's any questions you have, please let me know down in the comments below, and I will get to them as soon as I can. But until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And I will see you next time. Bye!